Hello, I'm Scott and Lena. And my name is Leanna House, and we are two new faculty in the Department of Statistics at Virginia Tech. And today we're going to talk to you about a concept that we developed called BAVA, Bayesian Visual Analytics. Now, visual analytics is a new field that is combining information or research in human cognition, how they process information, with good intuitive visualizations of high dimensional data sets. For example, if you were in the Department of Homeland Security, you are an analyst that needs to process data sets that are coming from a variety of sources, different scales, different types, and they're supposed to try to figure out what's in this data in order to identify possible potential terrorist attacks. Now, they're experts, and they need to be able to make sense of this data and the cognition. So one way that they would like to do that is just to basically look at the data set, visualize it, and see what they can learn. Now, these visualizations, however, are only two-dimensional representations of these very complex, high-dimensional data sets. And that's a problem. That means that we have to develop some very technical ways to reduce, say, thousands of dimensions down to two dimensions. And so we're going to lose information when we go from 1,000, say, down to two. They might then consult a statistician or a computer scientist or an engineer in terms of how to do that. Now, my problem is the statistician is not necessarily going to be able to communicate well with the analyst. Maybe he or she speaks sort of a different language, where they just, at minimum, use different tools that the analyst isn't used to. And so we developed BABA that's going to be able to combine now very complex analyses with visualizations so that experts can then make sense of these data sets. Now, an important point to make is that these experts have a lot of expertise, right? So that means that we want to be able to include their expertise in models. And so BABA has actually really three very fundamental components. We're taking advantage of sense making, we're going to take advantage of very complex statistical tools, and then we're going to take advantage of visualizations so that experts can then process this information quickly. Now Scotland is going to talk to us specifically about the internals of Bayesian visual analytics. Well, thank you, Leah, for that introduction. Right now I'm going to show you a little bit about the Bayesian sense making loop, how we let the user interact with complicated visualizations and avoid dealing with the mathematics explicitly. So let me draw you a short picture. As with all scientific or engineering applications, usually the first thing a scientist will come in with is a set of data, which I'm denoting as D. So this data set, as Leanna alluded to, is going to be very high dimensional. What we mean by that is there's a lot of features in this data set. There might be thousands of things that can explain a particular scenario or hypothesis. As statisticians or mathematicians, what we'll generally do is we'll write down some sort of a model to make sense of this data. Now, these models can be anywhere from relatively simplistic to ultimately complicated. In any case, inference is going to have to be done through some sort of tunable parameter set, which we usually call theta. This tunable parameter set can be high dimensional as well, and usually can dumbfound most analysts, and they don't want to look at it. Instead, what they're more comfortable seeing is a visualization. Also, as Leanna alluded to, this visualization is low dimensional. So usually it's going to fit on a computer screen. It could be two or three dimensional. This visualization is going to summarize everything we've learned about data through the model and its parameters theta. Because the data set is unwieldy, typically the model is going to be wrong. So some anticipated structure that the model is going to impose on the data set, it's not going to be overly useful to the domain expert. What the expert comes in with is their natural expertise in the data set, and that will help them to make sense of the, the data. We allow the user to adjust the visualization, and this is what we call cognitive feedback. I'm going to write that as FC. So again, this is feedback that's imposed on a cognitive level. What this usually means is an adjustment to the visualization. Once this visualization is adjusted, we have to figure out what it means about the underlying data generating function, the model, the underlying parameters theta, and the resulting visualization, V. 
because the model is responsible for the visualization, we know that any adjustment to the visualization is again responsible for the model and in turn updates the visualization. This is what we call parametric feedback. And I'm going to draw this with a dashed arrow because the user isn't going to have explicit control over this parametric feedback. I'm going to put this in a box to denote this really is a black box situation. The user doesn't have to know what's going on in the mathematical updating of their cognitive feedback. They don't have to know how we're parameterizing this because they don't even know what the mathematical model is. They make an adjustment to the visualization through FC. We anticipate what that means and we re-update the model. And this updating of the model is usually accomplished via Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule in a sequential updating application that's based off of the cognitive feedback. In turn, that re-updates the visualization, which is an adjustment based off of their domain expertise and the true mathematical structure. They can repeat this loop several times, finally coming up with a visualization that is compromised between mathematical structure and their domain knowledge. Thank you very much. And this is how statistics is inventing the future.